Hello everyone and welcome back to the Blackford Book Club and another edition from my essential film reviews collection and I bring you, hopefully with a dash of reverence, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, directed by Martin McDonough. Because there ain't no God, the whole world's empty. So laments Mildred Hayes in the shape of Frances McDormand on her way to her second Oscar win at the 2018 Academy Awards and who, at the time of writing, has now secured both a third and a fourth gold Oscar statuette for her incredible central performance in 2021's Nomadland, a film she would also share her fourth award as part of the producing team for another bittersweet lament, this time to the nomadic travelling families from America's wasteland of forgotten towns. I have long held an acting love for Frances McDormand which traces all the way back to 1996 and the first of her husband's truly great masterpieces of modern cinema. Francis is married to Joel Cohen, who, along with his brother Ethan, are the world-renowned film-directing Cohen brothers, and whenever the need arises for me to hide from a wicked world, I turn to their classic of all time from 1996, Fargo. Quixotically, the cinematic brothers don't actually sugarcoat the wicked world, but paint it in surreal colours, as well as the awkward life events that befall the central character who sees a kaleidoscope of chaos coming their way and, run as they might, can never, ever avoid. Frances wasn't the marquee star name or indeed central character in Fargo, but she became both, as halfway through she entered the maelstrom of madness in the unforgiving cold and snow of Fargo, North Dakota, and stole both the film and my cinematic heart in the process. Here again, she shares top billing with Woody Harrelson and fellow Oscar winner Sam Rockwell, but it's Mildred's horrific story to tell via those infamous billboards and a majestic performance from Frances McDormand. Actors and actresses are always keen to trot out the same line post a successful film. It's all there on the page, they'll say. And we'll get to the part played here by writer and director Martin McDonough shortly. But Frances McDormand may break your heart as she seethes with the righteous anger of dealing with the unimaginable horror of burying your only daughter at such a young age, and she may well do so again as she converses with a passing deer, as she tends to the flowers of remembrance below those titular billboards and their mixed messages of desperation, anger and a need for justice. In many ways, this role mirrors that of her Oscar winning portrayal four years later in Nomadland, singular, detached, determined and seeking a justifiable closure to move on with her life and we very definitely see the film through her eyes, movements and righteous determination. But whilst re-watching this recently, I had a firmer appreciation for the roles of her co-stars and the narrative layers they provide. Longer term readers of my deliberately spoiler free film reviews will be aware of the recent adulation I've poured forth on the acting prowess of Sam Rockwell and that I've elevated him to one of the greatest character actors of his generation, ahead of his dearly missed friend, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Here he demonstrates that lofty compliment in spades, imbuing an already vile and distasteful character written by McDonough with verbal and physical tics, alongside repugnant stares and glares of a young man wholly out of control. Rockwell's performance joined that of McDormand in collecting an Oscar in 2018, and he'd follow this a year later with another Oscar-nominated performance for another repugnant character, that of George W. Bush, in Adam McKay's brilliantly flawed Vice. Writer-director Martin McDonough created and curated a cast of supporting characters and actors befitting a brilliant story that twists and reverses its way through 115 minutes of recommended cinematic fare. Peter Dinklage, Game of Thrones, Lucas Hedges, Manchester by the Sea, and Caleb Landry-Jones, Get Out, have all become household names and yet again, and very pleasing to this particular long-time fan, John Hawkes lends himself to a fantastic cameo role that shouldn't be overlooked. Please also do not discount the return once more of Woody Harrelson. If you see the film through his eyes, as well as the angry lady seeking justice and retribution for a monstrous life-changing crime, Maybe you'll enjoy this film as much as I do. 
As at the time of writing, I have yet to see Martin McDonagh's recent literary and directorial creation, this year's The Banshees of Inisherin. The nearest cinema showing his latest film is over 30 miles away, and I'm awaiting a release nearer to my home cinema. I've seen Martin's previous films, Three Billboards, plus Seven Psychopaths in 2012, and In Bruges in 2008, multiple times, and so eagerly await his latest offering. If he continues with the template of his cinematic career to date, I'm expecting an irreverence-laced, acidic-tongued, dramatic comedy. And although the comedy is largely absent here, except for the most extreme use of jarring, if still heart-rending moments, his multi-Oscar winner here in 2017 has all of the above, and so much more. Redemption, salvation, justice, grief, loss, justice again, and all because of three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, the written word of the film's director, a collision with real life, and a very pleasing trail it's blazed into our real world, and of course, the stellar acting portrayals of Woody Harrelson, Sam Rockwell, and my cinematic love, Francis McDormand. For what it's worth, this is highly recommended. And that was three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, directed by Martin McDonagh. And I live in peace and in solidarity. And I thank you so, so much for watching. Peace, everyone.